Hey, this is Ashley and you guys are watching Ashley Epidemic and I'm here to give you a little bit of rundown on some K-pop concerts etiquette. At this point, I've been to 39 K-pop concerts and events and that doesn't even include any of the Western related artists. And I think over this time, I've made myself pretty well versed within K-pop concert etiquette in particular. Considering that these events have been popping up more and more in the US and North America, I figured that it would be good to go over some of this etiquette because there still seem to be people that are breaking the etiquette. And while we can't make things 100%, I do want to go over certain things that people may be unsure of when it comes to these concerts and the proper etiquette. Let's start by going over the different kinds of K-pop events that you could possibly end up going to. There are concerts, fan meetings, festivals, interviews, showcases, and now fan signs that occur within the US and North America. Let's start with concerts, fan meetings, and showcases. I'm gonna group them all together because they all focus on going to a single group or artist, and essentially they follow the same sort of rule set. When attending these concerts and fan meetings, feel free to wear as much of your group's merch on you as you want. If you want to wear something that's member specific, go ahead. Although I will warn you with the member specific stuff is that when you do that, you do potentially mean make it so that other members in the group may not give you as much attention and you may focus the attention that you could potentially get just to the one member that you have merch from. But that's not necessarily true. It's just some people tend to focus more on people who are wearing their stuff. Um, but if you wear just general group merch, it's fair game for any of the members. It's entirely up to you whether you wanna wear group merch or an individual member merch or nothing at all. What you don't want to do is wear another group's merch. Because like I mentioned before, the members can see you, especially if you are up closer. So when you wear another group's merch, it is kind of disrespectful because you should be wearing that group's merch because that's why you went to go see them because you like that group. So the focus should always be on whatever group you are going to see. I can understand if you really want to wear your K-pop merch, but really please try to make sure it's for the group that you are seeing. It is better to wear clothes that don't have any group badging than to wear another group's badging to one of these events. Even if the guys aren't super offended by you wearing another group's merch at their event, it will likely offend other fans. So you're going to bring negative attention to yourself by doing that. And to be honest, wearing another group's merch isn't going to get you extra attention from your favorites either. On the topic of clothes, wear something that is comfortable. You're going to be out there likely for hours, even if you're at a seated show, you're going to be dealing with whatever you're wearing for hours, standing, and who knows, it may even be hot in there. And a few hours can stretch to a whole day depending on the exact kind of event and how it is seated. So make sure that you are comfortable. Don't wear clothes that are too uncomfortable just so you can show out. It really isn't worth it. And I'm not saying don't show out, don't dress your best. I'm definitely not saying that. I'm just saying be smart in the way that you're doing it. Make sure that you can be comfortable and that you're not going to be miserable because if things start going wrong in that day and you're not comfortable, it's only going to compound things. Do bring a light stick if you have it. Make sure that that light stick is for your group, obviously, um, and enjoy it, have fun. It's fun to have them, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. On the other hand of that, don't bring a light stick for another group. Similar to the clothes, you don't want to do that. First off, some of these groups now have light sticks that are Bluetooth enabled. That Bluetooth only works for their light stick. And also, it's just rude to bring another group's light stick. No, oftentimes the members know not even just what the other what other light sticks look like, but they know what the different versions of their own light stick look like. 
So please, just don't bring another group's light stick. It is far better to have no light stick and nobody, literally no one will shame you for not having a light stick. Also add on, you're not going to have any less fun not having a light stick. In fact, that means your hands are free, so you have more free hands. So don't worry about not having a light stick. Just don't bring in other groups. Go ahead and bring fan-made signs and headbands as long as they're not too large and they meet the venue standards. You gotta keep in mind each venue has their own rules, so what might fly in one venue may not in another. Make sure that you're following the rules, but go ahead, bring something handmade. The guys love seeing those like handmade touches. They really do. Don't block other people's view around you with your fan-made goods or your phone though. So my rule of thumb when you go to a concert is try not to put your phone or your sign or your head or your headband being too large. You don't want things to really be going above the top of your head. So if you're holding a sign, hold it in front of your face, hold it underneath your eyes so you can still see it. But you have to keep in mind that when you start raising it above your head, you're making it so that people behind you can't see. You may already be taller than somebody behind you and they may be struggling, but it's a lot easier to see around a head than it is to see around a solid obstruction completely blocking your view. So really try not to hold up anything above like here. That way you're not blocking the people behind you. You have to keep in mind and think like if this, if you were, if somebody was doing the same thing in front of you, you would get annoyed too because you can't see. You, I can't tell you, I'm tall and I've still had so many views completely blocked off for me because of people that are holding things way up high and it's large and wide and I it's sometimes blocked the entire stage and I can't see anybody and that's no fun I'm there to see the guys just like you are so try to keep things below your head when you do that they'll still be able to see you holding it and you're not going to be blocking anybody do show your appreciation and love and how thankful you are for whoever you're going to see if they are doing a high touch this is your moment, however brief, for you to say how much they mean to you, to thank them for their performance, and just thank them in general. You don't have a lot of time, whether it's high touch or photo op, it's not much, but it is a moment, and take that opportunity to let them know how happy that they make you and that's going to make them happy in exchange. Do not go into a high touch and photo op to criticize these idols. First off, you're not going to get any sort of response and you're just going to affect the people behind you and the people who come after you, whether that is a downturn in mood or it is just that you can't, nobody can say anything. You have to keep in mind that these guys, these girls, they don't have much time. You're with them for moments. It is not very long. If in a photo op, you have a little bit longer, but keep in mind, you're not going to get any real answers on anything. So if you go in trying to right some sort of wrong, it's not gonna happen. And I'm not saying that idols are without fault. Absolutely not. I'm just saying that going into a high touch or photo op is not the time to address it because nobody's gonna get any answers in that period of time anyway. Another thing that you do not want to do is wear anything inappropriate. So it's not just about wearing another group's things, but you don't want to wear shirts and clothes that have sayings on them that are rude or inappropriate. It's a bad look and depending on how inappropriate it could also affect whether you can actually stay in the venue or not. So please try not to wear things that are too inappropriate. If you want to wear a goofy costume, I've seen people dress up in some really funny costumes that still follow the rules. That's totally fine. That's cool, but just try not to wear things that are appropriate, inappropriate or say inappropriate things. Okay, 
So let's talk festivals. Festivals function in a slightly different way in that rather than it being a single artist, you get multiple artists. And because of this, some of the rules that I mentioned before don't necessarily apply. For example, wearing another group's merch. Not as big of a deal. You can go ahead and do that. You can wear another group's merch. Ideally, you would want to stick to the groups that are actually performing there, but at a festival, it does have a much different environment, so you could wear other things as well. Nobody is really going to bat an eye in that case since there's so many fandoms coming together at that point. Same thing for the light stick. Obviously, you're not going to want to use a light stick, though, that is for a group that is not present, but if you're there for one group and you have their light stick, but you're really excited to see another group, you don't have to carry multiple light sticks just to do that. And you don't have to be afraid to use the other group's light stick during the group's light, the group whose light stick you don't have performance. Don't worry about that. It's totally fine. Festivals are more for people coming together. Next, I'm going to briefly touch on interviews. Now, interviews are a bit of a different situation. With interviews, they are already very limited events in that there are not many people that are going to manage to be able to get into see some of these interviews if they are at all. I've seen as few as like 10 or 15 people being able to see an interview to at most maybe about 150 to 100 people. So you're not going to have large amounts of people that are able to go to some of these interviews. But if you are lucky enough and you've stuck out the time that it took to be one of those people who manages to make it in, chances are you probably know a little bit of the etiquette by now. But let's just go ahead and just remind you of some things because I have seen some things that are a little bit upsetting with some of these interviews. When groups go to do interviews, generally before an interview occurs, general questions, maybe not all of the questions, but the general trajectory and some key questions are generally going to be presented to the artists ahead of time. That gives them a chance to prepare a sort of answer so that way they're not put quite on the spot so that way the flow of the interview will go better, especially on interviews that are being filmed. Because of this, artists already know kind of what they are going to say. But I found that sometimes with these interviews, what happens is people get very excited, you're in the presence of them, people call for their names, and what happens is fans start yelling. And there's nothing wrong with yelling at the appropriate cues, but you don't want to yell too much. When you're yelling, that means that the artist can't talk, which means they have less time to give answers, which means you get less time of them because you're screaming. So you don't want to be screaming too much. Follow the cues. They should be very obvious and don't let it stretch. You want to let your artist shine. Plus, Another thing is you don't want to over talk your artists. When they're asked these questions, you don't want to be yelling out what their answers are going to be. Let them speak. You never know. They might actually say something that you didn't expect, but if we answer for them, there's no way that we could know what they were going to say. What if they were going to secretly slip in some sort of hint for us for something in the future? We can't know if we're talking over them and they're not able to answer. So we have to be quiet and let them answer. So if you do make it into these interviews, here are a few things that I've pointed out. There are other things that are kind of common sense, but these are some of the big ones that seem to get sometimes ignored. Don't yell if your group is about to speak. This takes away time for them to answer. Don't answer for your group. That takes away their moment to shine. You're there to see them after all. If by chance you are asked something, try not to single out a member unless you're trying to highlight them in a positive light. And if you are lucky enough to be there, remember that this is not a concert. It's not a time to scream. It is a time for the group to answer and to get little tidbits of bits and information and fun little moments. You're there in that interview to show support for them. 
not just a scream. And then finally, there are the fan signs. And I don't have as much information as the fan sign as this is something that's been popping up more and more recently, but they are not like huge things. From what I have seen, they are, there have been two kinds. There have been ones that have been tied to concerts in which they are pushed through very much like high touch in which you don't have much time. You're kind of rushed along. They're just signing very quickly. You have a brief moment to say hello, very much like the high touch or photo op. But then there is recently the emergence of potential fan signs in the US that we've seen happen with ATs now in which they do function more like traditional fan signs that you get in Korea in which you buy albums to get into it and you are then potentially selected and those who are selected are allowed to go to the particular fan sign. Every fan sign has different rules so I can't speak to you exactly as to what each one will have but in general follow the rules of a concert. Don't wear stuff for another group. Focus on just your group just there. Um, if you don't want to single yourself out as a particular as your particular bias wear something that is group neutral or not related to the group at all um, and also obviously show your appreciation this is a time for you to actually speak to the members a little bit more you get a little bit more time so talk to them let them know how much you appreciate them again like i mentioned before you don't really necessarily want to bring up negative things but if you do want more of an answer you could get it in this situation but obviously you want to read the room and do something that is appropriate for the situation but yeah those are just some of my etiquette tips i do have a bunch more but those are the ones that came to my mind first because they are the ones that seem to have the most glaring effect but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions please let me know in the comments down below and maybe if you have a, if there was a bunch of questions uh, you can leave them in the curious cat if you don't want your name assigned to anything as well and maybe I'll do another video in the future with some other etiquette tips for these events but yeah I'll see you guys next time